So just departing Euston now, London Euston. Uh, beautiful day, en route to Glasgow Central. Excellent day. Very bright. See a Penalino there on your right hand side. Have you noticed that if you've ever got off a Penalino, they've got a cab at each end. So there's no need to shunt like they did with steam trains. So a steam train would run in with carriages. Um, a steam train would attach to the other end and take that away and that would leave the steam train at the buffers, which would then need to be taken to the turntable and turned ready for its next journey. So just coming up on the left hand side, you'll see preparations there for HS2. Uh, that used to be uh, parcels sidings. Uh, there was a shed there and trains used to go in there, parcels would be taken out, trains would go in and out. So they didn't have to go into the main station. But as you can see there now, the uh, demolition work's gone on, preparing for the new entrance for trains, high speed trains to go into London Euston. And we're on the X line now, as you call it. And the X line goes from right to left. Uh, the trains up and down the country to uh, railway staff go up or down. And crazily, we go up to London and down to anywhere in the north. So we're now currently transing, transiting from right to left, which takes us from the upside of the railway to the downside or correct side. Just when we leave this tunnel, uh, a little note there, there's a section of line that isn't used any longer that used to do exactly the same things a number of years ago. It's called the rat hole and you'll see it just dropping away the, ra the railway or where the railway was, just drops away where the wall is. And that is a tunnel entrance there that's now blocked off and that went from left to right. It was very, very, very tight in there. It was almost like a... I don't know, an underground section of line for us, not used very often, used when there was maybe disruption into the station down the main lines, but uh, it was very slow through there, very tight, got a lot of water from the canal, which we just passed, uh, not used very often, but famously called the rat hole. The Camden Barracks were there on the right hand side as well that's uh, steam drivers would work say for example from Preston like my father uh, they would come down to London Euston um, they would then when the carriages had been dragged away by another steam train would back the steam train out to the turntable which is on the right hand side at Camden there this the roundhouse is actually still there where they would turn the train to to be the right way around and then they would lodge overnight at Camden Barracks I think your dad stayed there, didn't he? Your dad was there, wasn't he? Oh, he, he told me a few stories, which I better not repeat. Yeah, they used to spend the night there and then work back the next day. In, in obviously, a number of years ago, there was no, uh, nothing like the speed we go now down to London. So drivers used to spend the night in the barracks set up for them. And they used to lodge there overnight. And as Darren says, his dad was there. And uh, yeah, a number of stories about that. We're currently in Primrose Hill Tunnel. Uh, not a particularly long tunnel, but uh, you can imagine in uh, the steam days, these got pretty clogged up with the smog and the mess from the steam locomotives. So not the nicest place to be in any of these tunnels. The slower you went, the longer you were in them. And they could well fill up with quite a lot of smoke uh, during the time. You see on the news as well, don't you, of the London, you, the view on Primrose Hill over London. And that's a long way yeah amazing us. that's just up above the tunnels there uh, fantastic views like you know, like you say it was really really good view there and today especially they have a fantastic view okay you can see the london overground and underground lines to the very far right uh, they serve the intermediate stations between london and the north and the midlands uh, one other thing you'll also notice which everyone on the railway notices as they go along is the amount of graffiti you get on walls around in different places, that uh, varies greatly from city to city. And then occasionally you'll come down and notice there's some more graffiti, some of it very artistic. 
the Pendolino has gone into uh, tilt mode now as well, which allows it to travel at higher speeds over the West Coast Main Line. It was, the original design was the advanced passenger train from the 80s. But the uh, en en enhanced passengers... Speeds. That's what Dan's trying to say. So yeah, the, the train sets itself up, leaving most of the terminus stations for high speed running. Uh, if we don't get high speed running, it doesn't always work. And then we just drop back to traditional speeds. But the speed is enhanced when the train's in tilt mode. So it allows us to go around corners quicker. And the train tilts into every curve. And the faster the train goes, the more the train tilts. It tilt, tilts up to 11 degrees on a pendolino and it allows us to go around the corners an awful lot quicker. And it only really works on the corners. You don't tilt without uh, a corner being present. So, and also one other thing, we don't have a steering wheel on trains either. A lot of people seem to think we have steering wheels. We don't. The bogeys pivot, so where the railway moves left to right or goes around corners, the, the rail or the bogey below us pivots and also the pendolino and the voyager fleet also tilt into these corners as well so when we're talking about the tilt that's what we mean uh, we have speed supervision at the same time as tilt that allows the train to be controlled it always knows how fast it wants to go and it doesn't allow us to exceed our speeds so this is west london junction we're currently traversing from here, we can go east-west, north-south, very busy junction. And uh, a lot of trains go through there every day. Uh, that's the bridge there, just where you go from uh, west to east. And coming up on the left-hand side, you'll see some cranes there. That They're no longer used. Uh, Freightliner used them for a little while. And those cranes would lift containers from the bodies of the train and transfer them over to motor vehicles to be moved on maybe a few miles where the railway wasn't uh, present. And also coming up on the right-hand side, you can see is the Royal Mail London Hub. That's where all the mail transfers from trains to uh, vehicles, road vehicles, to be uh, taken to all the local places. And most journeys, or most of your mail will start its journey or end its journey there. And Wembley Yard, which is a very, very big yard in the north of London, uh, it's just coming up on the right hand side you can see there um there's a lot of uh, freight in there for the channel tunnel also as well so trains that go there pass on go through west london junction down through the southern region and then onto the channel tunnel and around the world around europe certainly but uh, yeah very busy place and um, wembley stadium just outside to us on the right hand side there uh, lots of football lots of action there concerts so Lit up at night time, quite nice actually, Darren, isn't it? When the, the arch is lit up as well at night, you can see it and obviously you see a lot of people streaming out of their times onto the, the roads up above the railway. It does look stunning, yeah. Uh, the train's just reaching its maximum speed now of 125 mile an hour and it is in tilt mode as well. So no, no, no tilt to show at this moment in time, uh, but the train, as Darren rightly says, uh, 125 mile an hour now and um sat back there it'll seem quite quick i'm sure when you look at it here it seems to be i don't know maybe, maybe you wouldn't guess it was doing 125 mile an hour uh very difficult to tell sometimes from the front but you get obviously this fantastic perspective that we get of everywhere 